Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Unboxing and Stuff. Today we are going to be taking a look at the Husky Super Brute HSB 4000 Premium Tongue Jack, which we'll be installing on my new trailer. Now you may be wondering why I'm putting a new jack on my trailer. Long story short, there was some miscommunications and the uh, at the time we were removing the trailer from its original location and uh, the jack didn't end up getting put get put up all the way and it ended up getting bent. So the original jack was just a regular hand crank jack, nothing special. So we figured it was a perfect excuse to upgrade to an electric tongue jack, which is something that we've always wanted just for the convenience of it. And as we get older, it'll be nice not to have to sit there and crank for long periods of time. So this is what we ended up getting is this Husky Super Brute jack. And let me tell you, bit about the features and then we'll unbox it here. So this jack has a 4,000 pound lift capacity. It's supposed to be weather protected, have some soft trigger switches with backlit panel, three-sided high output LED light system for use at nighttime, low friction ball screw design, soldered electrical connection, hardened steel gears for durability, internal automatic thermal protection, 30 amp resettable circuit breaker, 25 amp current draw at full load, 6 foot 10 gauge power supply line, and the accessories that are included are supposed to be an inline circuit breaker, manual hand crank handle, just in case the electric component fails, you can still lift up or lower the tongue of your jack, emergency brake release handle, a bubble level, adjustable leg with foot pad, linch pin, and star washers. This jack is a full 18 inch stroke, rated load up and down 6 inch cycle, travel time is 60 seconds, 2 and a quarter inch diameter. It has smart stop technology, which electrically stops the travel at the end of the stroke, prevents stalling, and adds longevity to the system. And that about covers all the features that this jack is supposed to have. So let's go ahead and get it out of the box. So we have a uh, nice foam protection pad up top here. So what I think I'm going to do is just flip it upside down. And we can push that out here. We'll set it up on our table. Get the knife back out to cut a little bit more tape. So on the top here, we have our backup manual jack which is a nice feature. Okay. Well, I'll twist it up a little bit so you guys can see that. Alright, we'll just pull pieces out one at a time and take a look. So here. So here we have our Husky Universal Connector Storage Kit, which appears to be able to uh, hold the connector that goes in for your electrical connection to your vehicle. We then have our inline resettable fuse. Our bubble level here. And then here's our fuse. So it looks like it's just a little breaker. If it blows, you just would press it in to reset it with some nice heavier gauge wire and it looks like you can actually mount this inside or behind something as well which is pretty cool we also have our cable here that will go to the positive terminal of the battery then we have the jack itself which doesn't have a ground wire that you actually have to connect because the way that this system is grounded is through the bolts on the actual tongue of the trailer. So it's kind of a neat setup. And we got LED lights on all three sides here. Then we have our toggle switches, an on off switch, and then our up and down switch, which this is a momentary switch and then this is just a uh, two pole switch. Then up top here we've got a rubber grommet which is in here pretty well 
Um, but that's where our emergency crank would pop into if for some reason our electrical system failed. We also then have some other little compartment that opens up down here. I'm not sure what that's for. Uh, I'll have to look in the instructions and I'll let you guys know about that later. But yeah, so here's the jack. Um, from here we're going to actually go out and install it on the trailer, which I'm pretty excited to do. Get the old one off, put the new one on, and then do a little bit of uh, testing, see how it works. So, I guess we'll meet you outside. Okay, so the first thing we gotta do is remove the three bolts on the uh, bent jack. I got my drill set up here with a 9 16th socket on it. Okay, now we should just gonna pull the old one out. There you go, and you can see it was bent pretty good, but not really a big problem. So real quick, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up this area and then we'll install the new jack. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is pull off our foot plate here. And then we're gonna go ahead and take the jack and set it right in place. Perfect, and then we're gonna take our little lock washers and we're gonna place that on where the bolts go, which will allow the ground to make good contact because that is how this gets its ground. And then you take your bolt with its washer and just place it right on top there and go ahead and just get it started by hand and then we'll repeat the process for the other three holes there's a spiky side on this washer and the smooth side so you put the smooth side up that way it can bite down into that metal through the paint here Okay, I'm just tighten them all most of the way down by my fingers. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab my torque wrench and we'll torque these down to between 15 and 20 foot pounds. So I'll go ahead and do 20 foot pounds. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and just get them torqued. There we go. Put in our foot here, and we'll just pin it in place. All right, that's all that goes into mounting this into here. And then now we just have to run our hot lead over to the battery, to our resettable breaker, and the install will be all set, and we can test it out. Okay, so as you can see here, we have my resettable fuse, and I had to provide a ring terminal and a barrel connector over here to connect to the actual jack itself. I also provided some heat shrink tubing around here just to clean up the connections, make everything look nice. And then I have my battery box lid here, which I'm actually gonna take this punch and center a hole here, drill a small pilot hole and then a larger hole. And then I'll actually mount this right in the battery box because my box is small enough that I don't have room for it elsewhere. Uh, and so this will just be the part sticking out. So let's go ahead and do our center punch here. Okay, then we're going to take our small drill bit. Put it in here. Get our bit on there. Okay, now we're gonna take our large drill bit, put it in here, and we're gonna drill out this hole.
Okay, and that is a uh, 13 30 seconds drill bit, which happens to be the exact size of this. And then this is also labeled line and load. And so the load side, I have my barrel and the ring terminal on the line side, which will go right to the positive terminal on the battery. So I'm going to take that and just feed it through. And then place this guy over the top here, which it was already scratched up like this when I got it, which is a little bit of a bummer, but it's not the end of the world. And then this whole unit here seems to be like a seal and everything all in one. It just screws right on top here. Okay, and I got it finger tight there, and then I'll probably just take a wrench and slightly snug it up here, just a smidge, and then uh, this will be ready to go on the battery. Okay, so I just ran our main power lead underneath the tank and back up to here. So now we're going to go ahead and crimp it into the battery box lid. Okay, it's nice and solid. And now we're going to take our lid and we're going to go ahead and put on our main terminal and then our terminal for the resettable breaker. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and add on our negative wire. And then I'm just going to tighten these down here. Alright, that's all set. So now we just have to test out the jack here and see if it works. Okay, now we got it on here. Let's go ahead and try and raise up the jack. And it seems to work perfect. There you get that in place. And then you just go ahead and tighten down the screws here. All right, I'll go ahead and test it out. There we go. We got a little protector to hold our plug. Okay, so I've had a chance to test out the Super Brute Jack just a little bit more. Uh, I went out on a camping trip for the first time in our trailer and it worked great. It was really easy to use. Uh, the ability to lower and raise that initial floor plate so you don't have to come all the way down or all the way up every single time was uh, very handy. And uh, I have to say overall I'm pretty impressed with it. Uh, I did find out that to raise and lower you do not have to turn that switch to on. Uh, that's just for the LED light, so you can raise and lower with that off. And uh, yeah, it works great. It performs flawlessly. I have a smaller trailer. Uh, I wanted something that was you know way overbuilt for what I have, and I think that you know fully meets that need. So uh, at this point, I would say I'm giving them a nine out of ten because even though the packaging was very good, there were some small cracks in the plastic, and. I'm sure had I noticed that within the amount of time that I could have sent it back, they would have just sent me a replacement. That would have been a big deal. Um, but, you know, it's not necessarily even their fault. It could have been from the shippers. But, you know, it was still a flaw and it wasn't, you know, a severe flaw. It's, you know, just a couple of cracks. And I do have a cover that I put over it so it doesn't sit out in the elements and it's not getting the sun beaten down or the rain. So it's a little bit more protected than it would have been, you know, with the, the cracks or whatever, which may or may not ever have caused any flaws or, uh, you know, any breakdown of the machine. But, uh, you know, hopefully I'll never find out since I have it covered. So I think it's at least a little bit better of a, a choice to do that uh, anyways, even if it wasn't slightly cracked along the edge. So, but all the metal components and everything, all solid, no no problems with any of that, just some of the plastic. So, 
Uh, I think that about wraps up this review and install. Uh, I definitely would recommend it. Uh, I haven't compared it against other electric jacks, but I will say that this is you know, exceeding my expectations as far as performance so far. So I do really like it, and you know, if you're looking for something like this, I don't think this would be a bad choice at all. So uh, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you liked it. Feel free to leave any comments or critiques down in the comments. I'm always trying to improve. And I do apologize for the uh, white balance being way off, the brightness. This is the second video I had that was like that. But don't worry, there won't be any more because I ordered a filter specifically to stop that so that in the future I can provide you know better content and you'll be able to see better out in pure daylight. I'll probably do a unboxing and review of that lens as well uh, so that way you guys can see the improvement that that's going to make. So anyways, thank you for watching and we will catch you guys next time.